sure I would have liked to have had. I'll never know what it's like to have a great dad. I'll never know what it's like to be able to sit on my dad's lap, put my arms around his neck, and just get a hug without fear that it's going to turn into something else. I'll never be able to be hurting and ask my dad to go have coffee with me and sit down and just tell him what I'm going through and have him really care. I'll never have that. And literally what he did was he raped me. And he did it every week, at least once a week, until the time I was 18. I did a little bit of math and realized that my father, whom I was supposed to be able to trust, who was supposed to keep me safe, raped me a minimum of 200 times before I became 18. But I have something better. Because I have a walk with God and a relationship with God that is the absolute most wonderful and precious thing in the whole world. And the Bible says in Psalm 27:10, even if your mother and father forsake you, I will take you up and adopt you, and I will make you my own child. Amen? One of the things I remember that was probably one of the most disgusting to me was when I got old enough to learn how to drive, my father would take me out every Sunday afternoon for a driving lesson. And of all the ridiculous places to take me to do what he was going to do to me was he took me to a graveyard. And that's where he'd have sex with me in the car. And if anyone came around, then we'd have to get out of the car and pretend like we were looking at graves and sick, 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 sick. He worked nights as a truck mechanic, and so I was at school most of the time during the day, and I only had to deal with him on the weekends, but I tell you, I hated summers. Couldn't wait to go back to school. Lots of mornings he'd come and wake me up and put his hands on me under the covers. I prayed for my dad to die. That didn't happen. I prayed for my mother to leave him. That didn't happen. I prayed he'd leave me alone. That didn't happen. Why didn't God help me? I was praying. I was asking him. I was this innocent little kid being abused. Well, you know what? I don't have the answers to all that, but I can tell you that by faith I now understand. That's why that scripture that I shared last night about by faith we understand how the world was made. You know, I, I, I can't explain it to you in my mind, but I know that God didn't get me out of it, but he did give me the strength to go through it. And listen, I remember when I was a teenager laying in bed at night, which was my favorite time when my dad was still at work to lay in bed when it was quiet. And in my little childish way, I would pray then and I would think someday I'm going to do something great. Someday I'm going to do something great. I believe that God puts a seed of greatness in everyone. I believe there's more capabilities inside of you than what you can even begin to imagine. But Satan tries to diminish us. He tries to demean us and belittle us through people mistreating us. But I want you to know today that even though I was being abused and abandoned and it seemed that nobody was going to help me and that it would never end, right in the midst of that, God had a plan. God had a plan. And I cannot explain this to you, so don't even ask me to. But for years I said, of course, I wish that I would have never been abused. But God has helped me recover. And about three years ago, I said that, but of course, I wish I wouldn't have been abused. And God stopped me, said, stop saying that. And then I, I thought about it and I thought, <laughs> and I know this sounds crazy, 
But I'm glad it happened. You know why? Because I'm a better person now than I ever would have been. I don't know how to make any sense out of that, but I know that I know that I know that God has redeemed me. And he has taken what Satan meant for harm and worked it out for good. And I'm a better person than I would have been had it not happened. And you can be too. I'm stronger. I know God better. I understand people's pain. And I believe it's, I believe that it's made me able to reach out to you in your pain and your need. And to tell you with all passion, God is alive. He loves you. He's got a good plan for your life. And don't you ever doubt that. Don't ever doubt that. Can you recover? You're looking at somebody who did. Amen. You're looking at the evidence that you can recover. There's no pit so deep that he can't reach down in it and lift you out. He will set your feet on a rock. He will give you a wonderful life. He will give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He will make you a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And he will give you a double blessing for your farmer trouble. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. When I got into my teenage years where he would get very drunk and then he'd force me to have sex with him in the back seat of the car. Once a police officer caught him and I thought, finally, somebody's going to help me. I was so glad. But he and my father talked outside the car for a while and my dad finally told me, he said, I told him you're my cousin and he promised to let us go if I would let him have sex with you, so you're going to just have to do it because otherwise we're going to end up going to jail. Well, thank God the police officer got a call on his radio and I got out of that one. Now, how can that have happened to me and me stand here before you today in the condition I'm in today if God is not alive and well on planet Earth? is that possible without God? The biggest black eye that you can give the devil <laughs> is to give God your pain and let him turn it into gain. To give him your mess and let it become your message. Because you see, when I tell you that I know what it's like to hurt, you believe me. And when I tell you my testimony and I tell you that I am healed and whole and sane and well and I've got a great marriage of 43 years and four kids that are serving God and 10 grandchildren and that I love my life and I think I'm being a value to the kingdom of God, then that gives you hope. That gives you hope that God will do it for you. Amen. And that's why I'm doing this, because I want, I want people to know how good God is and that your struggle is worth it. Your journey is worth it. Don't give up.